Mailbag week marches on. Are we in a new era for the Boston Celtics? Which star can improve more? And let's go all the way back to the first ever Celtics game right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Green and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day. I'm here for you every day, usually Monday through Friday. This month, August, and through September, first couple of weeks of September, it's three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This is the Wednesday show. You regular listeners, you everydayers, thank you so much for being here every day. You will notice on the YouTube page that, yes, I am wearing the same shirt as I did on Monday because I'm recording all three podcasts this week at the same time, which means if something happened on Tuesday that may be worth mentioning, I will get to it when I get back from vacation. But I'm pre-recording three podcasts for you, so you have your three podcasts this week. All of them are mailbag podcasts, so we can make sure that you get all of your questions answered I've got a ton of them. I still can't get to all of them. People are submitting them at johncorrales.com slash mailbag. That's how you get your questions in. Uh, I am John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I used to play once upon a time. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook is the number one sportsbook, and it's the official sportsbook of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash lockdown today to get started. So, like I said, it's a mailbag week. Later on, we'll get back to the first ever Celtics game. I will tell you what happened in the first ever Boston Celtics game way, way back in the mid-40s. Can the Celtics get in on a Dame deal? Uh, Can Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum improve more? But let's start with a question about the new era from Matt, who who asks, is this the beginning of the end? With Brad bringing Porzingis in to compliment Jalen and Jason, do you think this is the beginning of a new era of Celtics ball, post-smart, less defensive-minded, or do you think this is a move that is a last-ditch effort to win a championship with Jalen and Jason? So it's a little bit of everything. There's no doubt that the Celtics are moving in a different direction. They have embraced the Missoula ball. Uh, Brad Stevens is full-on Missoula ball. He is there. Uh, he's, he's backing Joe up. This is what it's all about. So Porzingis is here to add more shooting the Celtics. And I said it during the course of every, the, the everydayers, people who listen every Monday through Friday, generally speaking, have heard me say, I wanted the Celtics to run their offense through Marcus smart. But if they were going to run their offense through Jason Tatum and just have smart spotting up in the corner, then get rid of them. And just move on. Just move on and send Marcus to a a place where he can be appreciated. And they did that. I don't think the the situation was changing. So as much as I want the Celtics to play a different style of basketball, as far as offensively, I I, I admit that if if you're going to go this way, then yeah, the post-smart era, you had to bring somebody in that was more of a shooter. So here's Porzingis. Is it the beginning beginning of the end? Yeah, the new collective bargaining agreement was the beginning of the end. That's the thing. They really that I cannot stress enough how much this new collective bargaining agreement changed the Celtics. They would have had they they probably would have kept Grant. They would have had a taxpayer mid-level somewhere in the $7 million range or so that could have gone to somebody on the market. The market probably would be a little bit different. So I don't know if the guys who are available right now would have been available uh, under the old collective bargaining agreement, but all the Celtics would have been was expensive. And as long as Rick Grosbeck and, and the ownership group were willing to pay the tax, which they have been, then the Celtics could have just kept adding 
and eventually they would have gotten too expensive, but it just would have been a matter of, Hey, let's cut the payroll down a little bit. Let's let's, and maybe they would have moved on from Malcolm Brogdon eventually and just to pare it down, but they wouldn't have had the same parameters here. So this is the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of something new, a new era, whatever you want to call it, because whether it's Jalen and Jason or Porzingis and one of those two or whatever it is, they're not going to be able to keep all three forever. And you could probably do it this. Obviously, they're going to do it this season. You could probably do it next season. But after that, I don't know. I don't think it's possible. Uh, and if it is possible, that means Derek White might be gone. Robert Williams might be gone. Like the, the money's got to get out of there somehow. And so if they think, wow, this triumvirate is so damn good that we can fill it with a bunch of minimums, then that's what they'll do. But in a couple of seasons, players that you like are going to go away. That's how this collective bargaining agreement is designed. It's what it's designed to do. That phrase, what I just said, in a couple of years, guys you like are going to go away. I mean, that's generally kind of always possible, but it's definitely happening to every team in the NBA. Every team in the next couple of seasons, players you like, guys that you have their jerseys, they are going to go away because that's what this collective bargaining agreement is aimed at doing. So this is the beginning of a new era. What the direction is, is still kind of in flux. It's That's kind of going to be determined this upcoming season. So, but the league is changing fundamentally. It's going to be interesting to see how it progresses. Lauren asks... Do you think Delano Banton will get minutes early on or at any point throughout the season? I'm intrigued by his playmaking abilities. I I think Banton, well, first of all, his, his deal isn't even guaranteed through camp. So not only am I not sure he'll get any minutes, he might not make it out of camp. So prepare yourself for that. Even if you're intrigued by his, you know, his, his length and athleticism and what, what he's able to do playmaking wise, he's a big, tall guard. Um, I wasn't all that impressed with him in summer league, but okay, not great. I think summer league failure is kind of a red flag, but not always. So we'll see. Uh, I don't think that he's going to be in the rotation. If he is, he's going to have to fight his way into it. So we'll see at this point. It's, it's the middle of August or approaching the middle of August. So to quote KG, anything is possible at this point. So I mean, I can't say no definitively, but very unlikely at this point, he's going to have to earn those minutes. He's going to have to, he's going to have to show out in, in training camp in, in preseason. So it's, it's possible, but he's, he's got a lot to prove. Jack asks, who do you think has the most room for improvement Brown or Tatum? You know, I, I don't want to sound like a cop out. I I can't pick one or the other. I can't sit there and say for sure one has more to improve. I think they're kind of equal. I think they've been progressing equally. And I I know how it sounds, but I think if you're if you're saying you're, you you compare them to like a glass of water. And how much of their the glass is full? If you reach your full p- potential, and the, that's the glass at the very top, I'd say they're both somewhere in the 70, 70 something percent range. Eighty, like I really do feel like both guys have like that twenty percent more to get to, which is kind of scary. But you know, for the rest of the league, great for Boston if they can get to it. I really do think, I honestly believe that there's some kind of 20% increase in their abilities that both guys can face. So I think they're both kind of equally in that, in that range. Like I don't think Tatum is at his potential and Jalen Brown has a ton to, I really do think they both have 
I've been very vocal about Tatum. I did a whole episode about Tatum and, and the way he can improve. He can go from fifth in MVP voting to first in MVP voting. I think Jalen can go from second team all NBA to gets MVP MVP votes. Like he he I think has the potential to get into that fifth in MVP voting. I, I do think that Brown is behind Tatum, but I I don't think anyone has far and away more to improve. So sorry, Jack. It's not a co- I'm really not copying out here. That's my honest answer. I think that there's there's more there. Uh, I, I think, I think that that's, that's, that's where they are. They're just kind of equal at this point. All right, let's come back and see if the Celtics can get in on a Damian Lillard deal, but not for Damian Lillard. We'll talk about that in just a second. First, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America, getting ready for football season. That's right. Training camp is open. So get in there at uh, on on the FanDuel app, get a chance to win all season long because right now, if you bet on the Super Bowl winner, you pick a Super Bowl winner, whoever you want to pick. I mean, I'm not going to pick the Patriots. I'm not. I don't think they're that good. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be very good at all. But regardless, I'm not a big football guy, so maybe I'm wrong. But if the team that you pick, when you bet on the Super Bowl winner. You can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. So what do you want to pick? Pick the Chiefs. Every time the Chiefs win, you get bonus bets. And you can get those bonus bets for every victory. So flip them around. Put those bonus bets on some point spreads. Put them on some player props. You know, who, who's going to throw the most touchdown passes? Who's going to catch the most touchdown passes? Over-unders. Uh, plenty of stuff to bet on at FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Start earning those bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Just ask you if you're going to do it, please gamble responsibly. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. This is Wednesday. Uh, mailbag, because I'm recording mailbags all week long. It's a mailbag week. You can see it on the uh, YouTube page. It says mailbag week. So Friday's show going to be a mailbag as well. You want to get in on it? JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag. That's the only way I can be organized. It's the only way I get it. Do not send me questions anywhere else. I mean, you can. I just won't remember that they're there. It's just how it is. I'm sorry. JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag. Uh, so let's get back into the questions. Dave asks, any word on Brogdon? With the backcourt a little thin, is Peyton Pritchard actually staying with the team? Uh, are there any guards you think the team should target? We talked a little bit about that. I, I don't think there are many guards are out there. Uh, I threw Ish Smith out there as just a, hey, you know, he's been a Celtics killer. I, I, I could live with Ish Smith at the end of the bench. He just won a championship with Denver. Legitimately say, you know, hey, you he just won. You, you are going to get your ring when the Celtics go to Denver. Like that would be really cool to actually have somebody in there that just won a championship that can talk about, Hey, how did, how did this actually happen? What, what did you guys do that helped you get over that, that hump? So, uh, but as far as any word on Brogdon, no, no word on Brogdon. As far as I know, Brogdon is moving along with his forearm injury. Um, and everybody and the Celtics is saying he'll be ready to go for, the regular season. I am not ruling out, and this is just, I'm not, I don't have any information on this. I'm not saying this. I'm guessing. I'm watching for. I'm, I, because Scotty Pippen did it, I'm wondering if Malcolm Brogdon, if he is upset at the Celtics, Would Malcolm Brogdon choose to get surgery on his arm close enough to training camp where he would miss time? And would he frame it as tried to rehab it all summer and now just couldn't get it done. Now I'm going to miss six weeks because um, just had to get it right. And all of a sudden that six weeks gets you into December. Is he petty enough to 
do that? Um, I don't think so. My guess would be that he's too professional for that. But also, if he's pissed off, and we heard the quote from Joe Missoula basically saying, yeah, we have to mend some fences. If he's pissed off, and I don't blame him because he was basically traded, then I don't know. Pissed off people do crazy things. So if he decides to get surgery at the beginning of September or in the middle of September, and all of a sudden he's going to be out till Christmas, boy, that puts the Celtics in a real pinch. And, you know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't know if he would, but I've seen players do it before and we'll see. <laughs> Aaron asks, does Missoula ball really work with the Jays who are good, but not great three point shooters. Don't you really need uh Steph Curry, Clay Thompson as your number one and two for Missoula ball to work? Well, not necessarily because the volume, you don't have to be 40%. In fact, I would say the opposite is true. If you're 40% three point shooters, if you're just elite, then you don't have to launch as much because they're more likely to go in. I think what Missoula ball does is you launch enough three pointers, 50 of them in a game and you hit, even if you hit 30%, that's 15. Okay. Well, can you get to 20? Can you hit, can you get to 20? 20 is the magic number. You make 23 pointers in a game. You're going to score a lot of points because that's, 60 points. You're going to get some free throws that probably get you into 70. You could probably get yourself another 15 buckets, just layups, just naturally occurring two pointers. That'll get you to a hundred pretty easily. So there's the math is there. You don't have to be an elite three point shooting team. In fact, I understand the concept of if you're a jump shooter and you're not particularly great at it, why don't you just shoot threes? If you're going to shoot terribly from the field, if you're going to shoot terribly as a jump shooter, why not shoot terribly as a three-pointer, a three-point shooter, at least when those go in, they're worth more. So that's the type of mentality that we're dealing with here. I don't want bad shooters to shoot at all, but no, you don't need to be a Steph Curry or Clay Thompson because the volume takes care of the, the rest. Like if you can get yourself 90 shots, then you and and 50 of them are three pointers, then you will win. Just, just shots, get the 53 pointers up, get 42 pointers up, then free throws, get them into the, if you can get 15 to 20 free throws at that point, you'll win. You'll win that game just by the shots made shot shots taken. The, the, the shot profile there will, I think more often than not, that will end up in a win. That's that's Missoula ball. That's what he's that's what he's working towards. So, yeah, it you don't have to be elite. You just have to be above average. And the Celtics are mostly above. And if you can be good, then then yeah, fire away. Jonas asks, do you think we could be the third or fourth team in the Dame saga? Maybe getting Tyler Hero in the process or moving Brogdon. Uh, I think if we get the Spurs involved, taking Lowry, offering up a pick, magic could happen. Look, I, I think it's smart GMing to be waiting on the wings. And you tell Portland and you tell Miami, look, we've got these assets. If you feel like these assets can help facilitate the move, give us a call. Let's see. Maybe we can talk. Now. Would you want to be the Celtics and facilitating a move that helps a rival get an elite player? Maybe not. Maybe the Celtics don't want to be that team. However, if a team is going to step in, if the Celtics are going to say, well, we know, I don't know, Oklahoma City, the Pistons, Minnesota, I don't know, pick a team they are about to hop in on this deal and help facilitate it. So it's happening. Well, at that point, why, why not 
see if you can hop in and say, Hey, you know what? We, we have something that might work better for you. Why not hop in? And maybe they don't want to do a deal with you, but I feel like that would just make sense. If the, if it's going to happen anyway, then you might as well try to benefit from it. And maybe Tyler hero isn't like the, the biggest score. I don't know, but Tyler here is pretty good. And ball handler off the bench. He's not, he's, he's not a good defender, but the Celtics are, I think he would fit and it would be an upgrade. So if you can do that, I'm all for it. I think it's smart. I think that's a smart thing to do. All right. How about offensive player of the year? How about the first ever Celtics game? How about me playing in Greece? We'll talk about all that next. First, thank you so much for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Lockdown NBA still going five days a week. I would normally be hosting today, Wednesday, with Jake Madison. Like I said, I'm out. I'm I'm on a beach right now. You're listening to this. I've I've put on 12 pounds already, so I'm I'm chilling. But normally on Wednesdays, I'd be there with Jake Madison. So check out Lockdown NBA, rotating hosts, great shows all week long, great hosts all week long. Really fun, really fun. Add that to your rotation. Third segments on these mailbags are more fun questions. I like to end on a more fun kind of, you know, goofy note, whatever it is. Uh, So when you're you're asking questions, if you got anything funny, goofy, off the beaten path, send it to me. Third segments are where they're going to live. Martin says, shouldn't there be an offensive player of the year when we also have defensive player of the year? As... I think that will uh, be more focused. I think there will be more focus on two-way players for MVP. So James Harden type doesn't win the MVP again. I like the idea. <clears throat> I like the idea of it's it's kind of like doesn't the NFL do that? Offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year. Do they not? I told you I'm not a football guy. Uh, <laughs> obviously. But I I like the idea. I think the problem is. Most times the offensive player of the year will be the MVP, but I think it would be a great way to break a tie. And like, if like Jokic, they, they, they probably would have given Jokic the offensive player of the year, right? Because of the points and the assists and all of that stuff. Um, and that's kind of their way to say, Hey, we think you're kind of the MVP, but in these two MVP races, two man races, they could probably give one, the offensive player of the year and give the other one, the MVP. And they both would be major awards for sure. So I think, I think that's a good idea. I think that that's been floated out there a bit. I'm all for it. I mean, what the hell? Uh, Ryan S asked, very simple question. What was the score of the first Celtics game? The very first Celtics game. Well, let's go back all the way back to November 2nd, 1946 at the Rhode Island auditorium in Providence, Rhode Island, about 15 minutes away from where I am right now. The Boston Celtics lost to the Providence steamrollers 59 to 53. They were led by Red Wallace, who had nine points. They uh, they lost. Actually, yeah, no, they they're actually up. No, it was tied at halftime, and then they lost by six. Uh, Chuck Connors, the rifleman, for you older listeners, uh, he scored seven points in this game. And yeah, Celtics were not very good in that season. So you know. It's it's kind of wild. It it's a shame the Providence Steamrollers kind of went away. They would never allow two teams in the same market, so someone would have had to move. Uh, and the, and obviously the Steamrollers went away. But I mean, imagine me doing locked on Steamrollers. I would love to do that. Actually, the Providence Steamrollers. Once upon a time, now this is a uh, BAA. This is before. This is before the merger. So the Celtics, uh, this all counts. The NBA counts the BAA stuff in 
in the NBA stats. So this all technically counts. They are finished 24 and 38 fifth in the Eastern division. Uh, they were not, they were not good. <laughs> they were, this is a, a bad, a bad basketball team. The next season, they were not better the 20 and 28. Uh, then after that 25 and 35, yikes. What a, what a horrible start. Uh, for these 22 and 46 after that for a team as historic as this Boston Celtics, they came out and sucked. It wasn't until 1950, 51 when red Arback took over that they were 39 and 30 and they actually, um, were a winning team. Now they didn't win a championship until, uh, Bill Russell got there. That was part of the reputation. They they had a reputation for being good in the regular season and then kind of choking in the playoffs. Then Bill Russell got there and they just never lost. They never lost again. They just won a, a ton of championships, and that's the that's the impact of Bill Russell. But yep, that was that was the first uh, that was the first Boston Celtics game. So there you go. And then finally, Aaron says, "Boy, this one this one cuts me to the core. Do you have any videos of you playing pro ball in Greece?" Can you please post the link and show us a clip on YouTube? Video evidence or it never happened. Ouch. I don't have, I don't have any videos. Damn it. I don't even have a photo. This was 1996. The internet had not reached this part of Greece. Um, and the team has since folded. And so I didn't leave on good terms. And so, yeah, it, and, and it sucks. Let me tell you, it sucks because not, not only would it be like just fun, you know, a little bit of a flex. Oh yeah. Here's me. Here's me as a pro. Here's, here's me doing, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And, you know, putting some highlights out there. Trust me, I would love to be able to, to have that, but also, you know, I just turned 50. I wouldn't mind going back to, you know, half a lifetime ago. And remembering like, oh, damn, I used to have some, I used to have some skills. I have very minimal kind of footage from even my college playing days. That's a whole other story where tapes were destroyed and I'm not happy about that. But, um, yeah, man, I, it's one of my kind of regrets, like, I never had a cell phone. People didn't have cell phones back then. Um, they didn't have, they didn't have like people weren't just holding up their phones and recording. And I didn't have a family to kind of have like a bunch of these videos that they just sent to me that I could upload it was so long ago. And I played in a, a lower level kind of crappy. The, if you watch the videos where Giannis and Tentacumpo was playing like crappy pro basketball as like a 16 year old and just dominating everyone on the court as a 16 year old, those little tiny gyms. That's me. That's where I played and well before Giannis was doing it, but that that's the level where I played. It was, it was not a very high level. Like I've never come out there and like been like, ah, I used to be awesome. It's great. I mean, I, I, I relish my time there and I'm glad I, I got to actually say I played and if I, had it in me to rehab more injuries, I probably would have stuck around a little bit more, but sadly, I don't have any videos. Um, and that there's nobody more disappointed about that than I am because, and maybe it's good. Maybe it's good because I probably would spend a lot of times sitting there like play rewind being like, Oh, why didn't I just cross this guy over? Or why did I go right? That you was clearly there was an opening on the left. I I would have just been going over and over and over again, just cutting myself to pieces. So, um, sorry, I don't have video evidence. I can tell you that it happened, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Make sure you get your questions in at slash mailbag for all the mailbags. I'm gonna do more. Plenty of people have been sending in questions. I, it's just impossible for me to get to them all. I try to combine them as I can and and do do my best there. But um, johncarrales.com slash mailbag. Get your questions in. 
Serious questions, fun questions, NBA questions, Celtics questions, they're all there. So thank you for uh, listening. Hopefully, if you're a new subscriber, you're checking it out and you're saying, yes, I want to subscribe. So do so on your favorite podcasting app on YouTube. Get in there. Uh, get into the comment section. Let me know what you think. You every dares, I would love it if you shared the podcast. Get on out there. Spread the word. Tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team. Every day.